we interviewed a uh, guy from Blur, mm -hmm. um, Graham Coxon, who, you know, he's so, he's so sort of inspired and impressed by the songs as songs. And it's that, it's that thing that I'm trying to get insights into in a way. I mean, in a sense, deceptively simple, but also they, they are pop songs. They do have a great kind of... Yes, I mean, a, a lot of them are made, you know, designed in, in proper pop song style with verses and middle eights and solos and all the rest of it. And, and they tend to be very complete lyrically as well. Um, but then wander off into sort of some wonderful, uh, <laughs> wonderful territory. I mean, I, I like, uh, apart from the sort of whimsical thing, there's a very 60s song, Chapter 24, which is very much based on the I Ching. And, uh, but it's a great, it's a great idea. You know, you could say, well, well, it's uh, not cheating, but it's easy peasy because actually things, lines are lifted direct from the book. But it's a great idea and absolutely right for the period. Yeah, absolutely. And, and perhaps that's part of the attraction. It's very much, it is very clearly from the period. It, it's, uh, you know, they're not, you absolutely nail the 60s with them. It's, it's fascinating, that, that Piper, because it has got that, such a mixture of the English yes. quirkiness, childhood references, chapter 24, you know, and this guy riding around cages on a bike, you know, it's all <laughs> thrown in. <laughs> yes, this sort of pastoral sort of, um, scarecrow is the other one. I mean, again, just... Ex I mean, extraordinarily un... Well, almost like folk songs, I suppose, rather than... than uh, rather sort of heavier weight rock style of, of, let's say, astronomy. Also, not American, not influenced. You, know, you don't feel you have to sound American. I don't think we pr perhaps knew how to sound American. I mean, the curious thing is, I think when we went to America finally on that tour, uh, that first tour, uh, we were astonished at what, what we found, because <coughs> we'd um, uh, we'd obviously had some. Uh, some records out of America, but most of the sort of San Francisco bands were actually had a lot of country music in in what they were doing, and I think we'd just assumed that we'd be out there with people doing other versions of what we were doing. Yeah, absolutely, quite quite uh, quite different. I just think the um, the Fillmore events that you mm. were at, Janis Joplin was on there. Yeah, and you know, Big Brother were, were really a sort of real blues and country band, and uh, as uh, yeah, so many of them were, and others that had sounded psychedelic turned out to be just straightforward pop bands. How do, how did your light shows compare in the states? <laughs> um, what can I say? It was pathetic. <laughs> um, we arrived with our sort of 35 millimeter slide projectors to work in 5,000 seat <laughs> halls. We just, I mean, left to our own devices, it would have just been terrifying. Uh, we had a couple of things that we brought with us that were the, the, what were known as the Daleks, light spinning machines. Uh, but for the rest of it, we actually ended up relying on the Americans to help us out because uh, we were just um, yeah, not ready for it. I mean, in, just in terms of the the equipment, in term, uh, the, the ideas that um, that the lighting people were doing at the time were were fine, but the Americans have got proper powerful uh, stage lighting. Um, just going back to uh, the previous point, the. the and the fact that you didn't do what a lot of English, young English bands did, which, to sort of imitate that the blues sound that was R and B kind of sound, uh, and you know have the sort of South London version of uh, uh, which was a mix <laughs> yeah. of the Stones, you know, yeah. of R &B. but um, Louisiana meets sort of Chigwell. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 
some, something sort of distinctive. There was clearly a, a bit of a self-confidence there that you could do something different, uh, which I found very interesting. That out of this, you know, out of all the student. Yes, playing. because I, and, and I suppose looking back on it, uh, there was a lot of we used to play. As, uh, you know, when we were as the, a student band, a lot of it was R and B and Beatles and Stones covers and and Bo Diddley. I think there was a um, Bo Diddley was was very much an influence on Sid. And Sid's, good, I suppose, um, it's that thing of of sort of. It is part of that sort of whole rock and roll thing. It's it's actually not about being a brilliant musician. It's about being having some new ideas. And I think Sid just played guitar in a slightly different way and took a slightly different view of how to do things. And there's something to be said when I look back on, say, Bob Close, who's just a great guitar player, would have probably stayed in a in a more conservative groove if if would actually stuck if Bob had stayed in the band. But because it was pushing away from that, the sort trying of... to find things that um, you could do that are different and uh, unique. Yeah, I think Bob has has mixed mixed feelings about it now. But I mean, I've he's seen... a nice man. He's very funny uh, on the subject. Um, yeah, I think I think he he recognises that uh, in a, in a way, you know, his own. He's still playing. Mm, yeah, I've, I've seen yeah. him a, a yeah. little bit. And, so, and, I mean, he's actually playing the stuff that he likes, always liked playing. Yeah, he, he was great. I mean, he was far too good for us, really. That, that was part of the problem. He'd love to hear that. We're seeing him this afternoon. Oh, really? I'll tell him. <laughs> no, I'm very fond of him. Um, in that sort of difficult period when things were, were going wrong with Sid, um, can you remember what there were these what now seem to be you know almost uh, records of of his inner work, inner mind you know uh, thinking of scream your last scream mm. um, vegetable man um, hand jug band blues very sort of uh, raw fragmented sounds all of them and two of them haven't ever been released scream your last scream mm. and vegetable man they're all great, actually, listening to them now. There's sort of, sort of terrific kind of punkish sound <laughs> to them as well. Yeah. <laughs> pre, pre uh, you know, pre, pre, predicting punkishness. But um, what, there was a lot of talk, I think, with EMI about whether to produce one of those as a single. I think Scream Your Last Scream was, then they didn't. Yeah, so I think, well, I think Peter Jenner put them out on uh, sort of as a bootleg feeling that they should be seen and heard but I, I think they were sort of unfinished and that that was part of the problem and um, I think some of them got I I do some vocals on them and I suspect the others you know didn't want me to shine which one do you do vocals on I can't remember now I think scream the last scream It's not not my greatest work. <laughs> to listen to it again very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> it's 